This is part two of our Building a Home Oasis with Green Stormwater Infrastructure talk. And I'm going to go ahead and continue talking about the design by jumping into the plants plan. To see more of it, please find the part one. <clears throat> so when we do our plants plan, we generate the overall, after we've generated the overall site model and done the earthworks, we layer in the plants. We use quite a few. We've got 140 different species of native plants in here. That's not counting fruit trees and vegetables. That plan just showed just the trees. Here is a perspective view that our clients really like to see of what this will look like when it grows in. You can see here a as-built diagram of where we place the different vegetable plants for them. Here's the full plan of the front yard, full plan of the side yard, full plan of the backyard with the permaculture orchard and sweet potato berm. Here's the phases of succession the permaculture orchard will move through. First, we'll do cover crops, annual plants, and then we'll move into having these beautiful trees growing in that space, providing fruit uh, that's organic for these homeowners right at their home. No need to go to the grocery store. So moving along from design, uh, the next phase of this is installation. And in that rainscape installation, we did multiple phases. <clears throat> Phase one was just doing the earthworks and ground cover, and we did the sculpting the burns there. We rerouted the cistern overflow. This homeowner already had 10,000 gallons of water storage in their cisterns, but when that water overflowed, it was going out into the pasture. They weren't going to be using it. So what we decided to do was route that water into their permaculture orchards, berms, and swales. So we have this green pop up here. That's where the water from the overflowing cisterns comes out. They get to 10,001 gallons and this water starts coming out through this pipe. And then when their whole backyard area has all the water that it can take, can't take anymore, it'll start flooding their house. The water goes out through this black drain grate and it goes out into the pasture. But we use as much water as we can in that site before it goes out. We made uh, raised beds for vegetables planted 140 plus native species, kind of lost track. We used a compost and mulch blend to revitalize the soil health, and introduced mycorrhizal fungi. We did cover cropping, both with native species and agricultural cover crops. And we added river rock for aesthetic appeal, as well as holding in that soil moisture. And they had tomatoes do so well that in our November installation of the trees, they were just like, eat all of the tomatoes you can. Please help us deal with them. We're tired of tomatoes for the season. The plants were over six feet tall. We did really well in that compost that we brought in. Even though the original soil was quite rough, as you can see. Here's our irrigation system going in to keep that orchard watered and help the plants get established. Uh, our native plants don't require irrigation once they're established after a year or so, but while they're getting started, it's certainly useful to give them some irrigation to make sure they thrive. We use low volume drip irrigation for that. In our front yard, we had to sculpt the earthworks by hand because we had a rock wall that prevented us from getting in there with the machine. You guys did a great job with that. It's a lot of work. And then uh, in about nine hours, we were able to dig all of the earthworks for the backyard and the side yard with this machine. It's a mini X, we had a great operator on the machine, sculpting out these basins, which we were then able to fine tune by hand. After we sculpt the earthworks, we get to everyone's favorite part, which is painting with plants. We use lots of little four inch plants. They grow in really nicely for us. There's the trellises for some of the garden plants and vegetables. This is me planting a eastern gamma grass, which is one of my favorite native grasses because it has super deep roots that really help the water infiltrate into the soil and help with gaining that water storage capacity in the soil itself rather than just in the basins. Uh, earthworms shape. 
<laughs> here we are. Here I am again, standing over the many plants that we have laid out. Got the team planting it out there. Kevin's one of our best uh, workers. He's doing a great job of getting the plants in the ground. We bring out a lot of plants, a whole cart full. We use a really diverse palette of natives to really restore the diverse prairie ecosystem that was in this place. So finalizing it, we got to water everything in, make sure those plants do well. We spread out cover crops like these blue bonnets from Native American seed. And one of the things about doing this work is that we create good jobs for people. Uh, this is Reeds who used to work at a bar before the pandemic hit. Uh, soft hands coming to a landscaping job site for the first time, but she did incredible um, and is now one of our uh, key workers in uh, terms of making these installations happen and is very happy to not be working in the bar anymore and be working outside making beautiful things happen for the water and the wildlife and our clients. So it's really one of the great yields that we get from this work is clean, green jobs. Um, we make beautiful installations for our clients and we also have really high worker satisfaction. I've got workers that have stayed with me for two and a half years and that's pretty much unheard of in the landscape industry because this is tough work. It's a lot of uh, hard digging in the hot sun. Um, it's backbreaking, but uh, we have a good time doing it, take care of each other as a team. There's that side yard garden looking gorgeous after installation with all those stones. We do a lot of shoveling rocks to make this happen. It came out really nice. It's a really beautiful end product that is uh, growing in and going to have a beautiful effect for generations to come. So here, I want to reiterate, this is how this yard looked when we started. That's how it looked at the end of May when we finished up. A delightful place to sit and watch the rain come down. Have really rare native species in here, like this uh, Aristolochia tomentosa. And there's the backyard. It's almost completed. We hadn't quite cut those pipes yet for the cistern overflow, but you can see that that uh, soil was all, that was looking so rough in the beginning is all covered up and looking really nice. And there's the cover crops grown in in August, prepping that space for the fruit trees. And even in August, we had beautiful blooms happening like this fall obedio plant, which is one of our absolute favorites for our rain garden basins. Healthy land, healthy, happy people. So phase two was our tree and planting. We did 46 trees, uh, including fruit trees for the orchard and uh, local genetic native trees. We also trimmed back the native vegetation, did a little maintenance, and we planted other shrubs and native species that were either inappropriate to plant during the initial May installation or were unavailable for us to get out there. Here we have Kevin operating the skid steer to drill holes to plant trees. Sometimes in the hill country, it's just the most efficient way to do it rather than digging by hand. But we are careful not to glaze the sides of that hole and allow the Root, tree roots to grow in that naturally. <clears throat> so the crew, you know, goes out and you know, we're all planting trees together. This is hot, sunny Texas November. Getting those fig trees in. Here's that garden by the side yard. Here's that big orchard in the back with the rows of trees ready to go in. Three trees per berm. There's reeds carrying one of the trees. And the guys are out there digging holes in the berms. This is an area where we couldn't use the machine because it would tear up the soil too much. So we had to dig those holes for the trees by hand. Over here, you can see Cooper doing a great job of getting the Bermuda grass out. That's our big maintenance task is keeping the Bermuda grass knocked down. So there are the fruit trees, a whole bunch of different species, figs, pomegranates, plums, peaches, pears, apples. Um, We've also got the native trees from the local genetics. This is a linden tree, really great species, and we're excited to find that. It's pretty rare, and it's going to grow really huge. This is a canyon senna, another rare tree. It's uh, local to that area. We had it in grapevines, so our clients really love grapes. There are those fig trees in the ground and mulched in. 
with the native prairie plants behind them. So another angle on those grapes, you can see the raised bed gardens that were upcycled from a, a air conditioner that was on site and old cedar fence posts. We've also got a sweet potato berm for perennial food source. And then there's a three-tiered sink to help wash the vegetables before they even go inside. Maintenance is a big deal in these systems. So um, in August, it looked like this. That's how the native prairie looked. Lots of different color, lots of different species, lots going on. Um, super lush environment, not like the original turf grass that was here, super dry, super plain. But there's a lot going on here, so we did trim that back a little bit for our clients. Um, <clears throat> here we have the lovely Indian grass, and you can see a Maximilian sunflower, which we left standing even though it was done blooming, because that's a great place for birds to have a bird feeder and eat those seeds. These aren't just gardens for people, they're good gardens for wildlife as well. Here's that we referred to as the drain garden, where the cistern overflow was, and looking back down the orchard. Uh, back in August, we had the partridge pea cover crop blooming and the uh, gallardia blooming really nicely in that soil, as well as the Greg's mist flower, giving some instant color and cover. We also have in November the beautiful color of one of our native grasses, the bushy bluestone, or the, sorry, excuse me, the little bluestone. We also used a lot of bushy bluestone in this as well. Both of them have this lovely reddish color. I call it the second wildflower season of grasses because it's just gorgeous color in the native prairie. And here it is with a little bit of maintenance, trimmed back around the edges, um, but left tall in the center as wildlife habitat, balancing human use and plant and animal use. <clears throat> and the prairie is great at sequestering carbon, so even though we use a little diesel fuel in this, I think we pretty much sequester all of that uh, emission in the garden after a few years. Here we have the white mist flower blooming with some beautiful spot flower underneath it and inland sea oats behind it. And this beautiful drooping seeds look like a fish on the pole. <clears throat> And so that's the process of transforming a yard to a rainscape. We don't always do it at such a large scale. Oftentimes these are for residential homes and smaller suburban yards. And we're not jealous about letting our homeowners um, <clears throat> plant stuff themselves, but we do like to help with doing the really hard digging and the technical work of making sure that the overflows of these systems go where we want it to. And we're not gonna create a flash flood situation. I have a video here um, of the drone footage of the project, but it's not going to play. So we'll just have to go over to our YouTube channel and find that video there to see what this looked like from the air flying over, both after the May installation and after the final installation. I want to reiterate that these rainscapes, even though they're not necessarily at the river, are part of healing the river. Um, so wherever we do this, whether it's in San Antonio or Austin or San Marcos or anywhere in between, we're helping the local river system stay cool and clear and sustain the flow during droughts. Um, so whether you're on a hilltop or right next to the river, you can do something to help the river by making one of these rainscapes. Again, you can find our website at aeronativeland.com to see packages that we offer for installing these super cheap, super easy, including DIY packages. You can find us on Instagram, on Facebook. We share pretty much all of our projects from our portfolio. And my name is Shannon Brown. I'm the founder of Ecosystem Regeneration Artisans, and you can email us at any time to learn more about this. Well, thanks for listening. And remember, Rainscapes save water. It's just a matter of slowing, sinking, and spreading the rain into the soil so that we can keep those rivers cool, clear, and flowing, not flooding for generations to come. Thanks for listening.